Hello, everybody. This is Toth Station Tech Talk. Uh, we got a few topics on our list. Um, and uh, Dominic rejoining. Maybe you got a third topic. Uh, let's start out with um, PEP and the updated terms and conditions. Yes, thank you. Um, so I pasted a PR there that I wanted to bring into attention here. It's up for review. It's basically updating the, the terms and conditions document in the core repo um, with the recent changes to or the recently proposed changes to the how we work and trying to clarify a bit more and document a bit more what we have been discussing. Um, well, there is a quick one, which is the switch from two week to three week sprints. But beyond that, I added a bit of a structure to the document. I think uh, a section about specifically about issues and that's along the lines of, of gauge issue like we we need to have um we should have an issue sorry a description of what constitutes a good issue quality uh, so i hope that this section is the go-to place for this it basically highlights what things what characteristics issues should have ideally i mean those are I mean, it's called terms and conditions, but it's not a legal document. No one will sue you if, if you, know, you write the wrong issue, but it's like a, a goal, let's say, or a, what. Um, maybe one thing that um, I would highlight is not in the issue quality section, but be, uh, below in the life cycle section, which is how we implement this, there is a section, new section called requirements for issues to be planned, which is like more of enforcing the guidelines. Uh, again, all, all of this is a, an open PR for review and discussion. But anyway, I added here this section with an idea like a, a checklist of things that prevent issues from being planned, let's say, or you know what an issue must meet before it can be planned. Um, and it's a short list uh, to have an assignee, to be triage accepted, uh, to have a priority, and for new features to have estimates and basically to have estimate points. That may be, I feel, the most polemical topic. It, like, if you guys believe that this is a, it, sh it should be, you know, that strict or not. And the, to complement the changes, then uh, the final section is about the, the different sprint meetings um, and trying to mention the goal here is to delegate a bit more to the six. So backlog refinement and planning in particular are more you know, pointed point to the six as the providers of or well the six responsible uh, for issue quality let's say uh, but also and the backlog refinement session as a place to essentially coordinate this and planning but kind of delegate a bit more to the six those are the ideas on the update but it's up for review and discussion So I'm I'm good with it. I was a little bit confused about the type or the kind of the issues. Mm, thank you. You changed uh, that. Um, Gage, I think you had a look at it. So everybody, please have a look at it. Um, maybe this evening or tomorrow morning, I I gonna put an approve on it um, because I think the the content itself basically reflects what we are practicing or trying to practice anyway. So. It, it's not a huge surprise if you're going to read through it. Cool. Any other comments? Don't think it's gone again. Let's kick it. Um, thanks, uh, Pep, for updating that thing. And uh, call back URL subscriber list. What is that, Kevin? You brought it up. 
Yeah, so for the callback URLs, um, we basically have to maintain a list of people who are interested in a certain uh, advice request because if two people come to the user API and submit the same request with a callback URL, the second person uh, will get the ID from the advisor that's already in progress. Mm -hmm. So at the after that advice uh, request finish, we still have to send that person the uh, results. So we can't just attach the callback URL to the request because uh, people who come after the original request won't be able to be attached to it. So we have to maintain that list somewhere. Um, and right now, my thought is to use a uh, Kubernetes secret um, where you have the secret is associated to the document. Um, and then you have a bunch of keys within that secret where each one's a callback URL with uh, whatever use of data they provided um, as the value. And I didn't know if anyone had any input or a better suggestion for uh, where to maintain um, this list. Um, just a spontaneous feeling. Uh, are you re-implementing something like a message queue? Uh, it, it's a mode a key value store. It's yeah, yeah. Um, but, but um, we don't have a key value store. So yes, the, uh, we we have a key value store. Isn't isn't Kafka kind of a key value store? I mean, can't you mm -hmm. can't you create a topic per or call send all these things via messages? Not Bam. really. <laughs> I don't frozen. think so. Ah, okay. I was thinking. I don't think so. Okay. Um, I don't know how you maintain that in Kafka, because because it was if if you did it in Kafka, you'd still have to pull the subscriber information into memory, um, and then in the case of downtime, uh, you lose the subscriber list. Got that. Putting that in a secret feels abusing a se like feel abusing a secret, right? Um, because you are yeah. trying to use it as an encrypted temporary storage of information, but that's the the only thing. If yeah. introducing a key value store in memory key value store or persistent key value store for that feels also strange. Yeah. And uh, there was also that requirement. Uh, there can be multiple requests coming to the system, right? Uh, same request. Mm -hmm. And they can have different callback URL. Is that correct? Yeah. Uh, but uh, they should reuse the same uh, results. Yeah, because they, they hit the same, they, if they have the same contents in the request other than the callback URL. Mm -hmm. Do we care about uh, response time? Like if uh, that callback will be um, uh, called right after the analysis finishes or after I don't know, 20 seconds or 10 minutes. Is it I was, my, my plan was to do the actual sending the results immediately after um, the advice results are computed. So it's just as, at like the end of the advice workflow or provenance workflow or whichever um, the callback is for. Why don't we schedule a, a job uh, for sending back that stuff? I mean, uh, at some point in time, we're doing an advice workflow, right? And if the last task is um, scheduling a job to send it back to the URL, will that workflow be executed for the second same request? Or will it? That, so, so my idea was to mount the secret uh, in the last step. And mm -hmm. then. So, so the, the advice workflow will always be executed. 
for yeah. each and every request, even though it's the same contents, right? No, no. So, no. so the advisor request will be executed, and then the last step uh, mounts the secret. Oh no, no. Um, uh, step away from the secret. Um, if if multiple users request an advice on the same um, input, right, uh, software stack, yeah. um, and so on, will the advice workflow be executed for every user? No, just once. Just once, okay. And then the last and step will take all of the wherever we maintain the list and iterate through them and send the results back. Yes. Okay. Got that. That's complicated. Yeah. Then obviously we need uh, some kind of shared data storage uh, for that one. Um, secret might be okay yeah. um, because we don't know about the privacy concern of the callback URL. Yeah. Um, but it still feels like ah. Uh, it's abusing the system. May, yeah. Maybe have another look at how we could do that. There's uh, one issue with that uh, when you are queuing basically callback URLs, uh, it can happen that you miss responding uh, or calling to callback URL when uh, you mount uh, PVC, oh, sorry, not PVC, and you mount secret. Thank you you start sending uh, requests based on the callback URL, and the same request comes to the system. Uh, you can keep these secrets uh, not handled, right? Uh, callbacks not, not handled. Yeah. The, so the, the thing we'd need to do is be able to tell when the advisor finished, but not the whole workflow. That way we can send send immediately in these user API. So if there's a way to do if there's a way to get the status other than the workflow status. Um, what you can do, you can uh, uh, create uh, that key value store or do you have some key value store deployed, but you can also uh, use secrets but uh, in a way that there comes a, a request, right? You create a secret and you create workflow. Then another request comes, uh, you create secret uh, and you use uh, that workflow that is already running, right? Mm -hmm. uh, this way you basically group uh, uh, requests and wait for uh, advices to finish once uh, one advice uh, to finish once the advice finishes you can as a very first step uh, patch all the secrets and say uh, now I will handle these secrets like uh, adjust label uh, obtain all, all the secrets and serve them right so the one of the last tasks would be to, the first last task would be to say, I'm handling these secrets, do not uh, match these cached results. Mm -hmm. And uh, then the last task and collect these secrets and uh, send uh, based on the book, the, the sent the book. Is, is it clear? Yeah, so you're saying, so have, have the secret um, and then have like a label that says that it's accepting uh, being written to. And then right when you start the last step, change that label to be like um, in use or something to, to mark that it's in use. Uh, and then if it's in use already, then that means that the advisor results should already have been computed and we should be able to get them. And you can use two labels. One will be that uh, switch that uh, was described. The other label can be uh, advisor ID. So you can easily query it in mm -hmm. Bernatis API. Yeah. Uh, Originally, I, I was going to use the name for the uh, for the secret, the document name. So I, I don't think I'll need a label for the document ID because it should be able to be queried. What about multiple uh, requests that would be queued? Uh, like multiple requests, uh, looping to the same advisor ID, 
I was gonna have one secret and then patch a key for each uh, callback URL. So it's, it's just gonna be one secret. And if you scale up uh, user API? Uh, it should be fine since it's patches. So it should just be like, because the patch will be like, add this key. So you should never run into an issue because it should be, just be patch. Um, so they, they should be able to be written in order. Okay. And if you decide uh, that you don't want to use secrets, basically the same mechanism can be with key value stores because uh, this way ETCD is used as a key value store using secrets. Yep. Sounds to me like the complexity reach a level where we should think about having our own CRD for that stuff, right? Because that, that the the logic to handle all that stuff seems to be easily isolatable in in one controller, and what you really want to store is just like many objects for every callback URL that relates to an advice ID. Is that correct? Yeah. Yes. So the reconciliation loop for that um, CRD could be. Um, to listen for the readiness of the workflow of that advice ID. And if that is finished, the reconciliation loop sends out the um, uh, information to the callback URL. If that was successful, the object is done or finished state or whatever, whatever. Sounds like the same effort as patching around um, secrets, um, having key values stored and, and stuff. Might be a nice experiment for a CRD. Not saying we need controllers all over the place, but again, feels like it. And um, I wonder why we can't do it as um, messages on Kafka topics, because if you're going to create a topic for every advice ID, we could simply say I consumer, uh, no, I user request have this callback URL and put it in the queue or in the topic. And after that thing finished, we're going to pick them all up and, and send out information to the callback URL. And if the topic is, uh, well, if we acknowledged all the messages in the topic, we're going to delete that topic again. But again, mm. as we are Red Hat and Cloud Native and blah, 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 maybe this is a use case for CRD. I, I see how you could use Kafka, yeah. Where, where you could, uh... Uh, anyway, the topic feels like, uh, <laughs> even though it's easy, right? We're just queuing callback URL stuff here. Um, feels like the topic has a complexity that um, also could use a little bit of research because we are not the first ones doing that stuff, right? Is it always yeah, I, that people I, use Redis for that? Well, I don't know. I, don't know. I could. I, I was having trouble finding information. Uh, really? It's, it's a oh. tough thing for me to Google, but. That might have just been my issue. <laughs> no, 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 I don't think so. I think we are pretty good Googlers, uh, uh, users of Google. Mm -hmm. I, I actually think I might like Kafka better because then you don't have to maintain the label because if it's written uh, while it's still in progress, then mm -hmm. it'll just consume immediately. Yeah. So it's either we abuse Kafka or we abuse Kubernetes secrets. It's just one idea. <laughs> well, Kafka is just an application. Uh, using Kafka would just be an application that is using Kafka. Uh, oh, yeah, but we're creating a, a topic yeah. for each for each uh, advisor. So it's like yeah, you never know. Maybe in in our banks nowadays, uh, every customer is a topic. I don't know. So yeah. that's not abusing. Um, but it feels like um, secrets with labels, complex, a little bit abusive, Kafka with topics per advisor request or per advice ID, also a little bit strange. If we're going to put it under an umbrella of let's do some Kubernetes operator research, maybe the CRD and operator is most interesting. I, I don't know. Ultimately, up to you. Um, let's figure out an operational solution that we can maintain in the future. Yep. 
Any other thoughts on that one? Thanks for the brains, everybody. Um, where's my mouse? So Dominic has pushed the Kabyshev metrics stuff, um, SLO, SLIs uh, for Kabyshev uh, into the next week. Um, my my comment last week was, ah, is it is it somehow related to key result number three? Um, that is why I tagged uh, Dominic and uh, Gage again. Um, that's all the stuff on my list. Any any other topics? No. Then I'm going to stop the recording. Everybody stay cool. Stay here. I'm going to bounce it off to Frito after that. Thanks, everybody.